Just before we get started with today's video, I want to say that it's actually a collaboration with The Companion, which is a website and app for those of you who love science fiction. And, well, you're watching this, so I bet it's for you. Look, it's got exclusive and award-winning articles from various fandoms. Star Trek, Stargate, Star Wars. Two of those I love. One of those I don't care for. I love Star Trek. I love Stargate. Star Wars is fantasy, guys. It is. It is, no matter what The Companion says. <laughs> but it is great. Like I say, this is a collaboration. It's not a paid ad, which is why I could just say what I just said. Look, I'm a big sci-fi nerd. and I've been enjoying the Companions content for a while. I think you will too. Indeed, if you like this episode, you should definitely take advantage of their free 100-day trial because, well, one of their authors actually wrote the video that you're about to watch. And it's not just articles, they've got interviews with actors, showrunners, and experts from lots of shows, and they've even done a bunch of fun and innovative stuff, like having a Google AI expert create scenes of Stargate, and then they get the original cast to table read the creation. It's pretty amazing. And uh, I dig it, I think you'll dig it. There's a link below. Imagine the boundary between science fiction and science fact disappears. And in that time, you could just reach through and pick out a piece of tech from the Trek universe to keep forever. What do you choose? I can't fit a holodeck in my pocket. Or maybe I could grab a replicator. Rad, then I could replicate a holodeck. <laughs> Would that work? Then maybe you'd grab a tricorder to diagnose and treat illnesses, a phaser for super realistic cosplaying or something, or making your enemies disappear, set to vaporize. Or maybe you could prize a replicator off the wall for your own endless supply of Earl Grey tea. Yes, but maybe you should actually reach for the communicator badge, because not only is tapping it a handy way to communicate, but the universal translator built inside it is extremely impressive. It's a plot device that's pivotal to Star Trek and a lot of other space-faring stories. Look, if you're wearing a comms badge with Trek's Universal Translator built in, you can hear any language, that you can hear most languages, translated into your native tongue in real time. As you can imagine, this is incredibly handy when you're regularly encountering species from all over the galaxy or, you know, writing a sci-fi show where you need all the aliens to speak English because of reasons. <laughs> the Universal Translator was built into comms badges from the 24th century Star Trek The Next Generation era onwards. The greatest era, in my opinion. In one episode, two characters even have translators implanted under their skin. Before that, it was integrated into Starship computers but could only be used on away missions in the form of handheld gadgets or tiny wearable devices. So, how does the Universal Translator work exactly? Well, we've heard several brief explanations throughout the history of Trek and a fair few inconsistencies. One of the earliest is in Star Trek The Original Series, when the translator looks like a metal tube. Kirk explains that it scans brainwave frequencies to identify universal concepts and then translates instantly. However, what you end up hearing isn't a translated version of the voice of the alien standing right in front of you. The words themselves are just replaced. Somehow. <laughs> science fiction, everybody. As with a lot of tech and science in Trek, we need to, uh, suspend our disbelief to get our heads around universal translators. I mean, what about how the alien's mouth moves? It sure looks like they're speaking English. How come the translator can translate languages humans have never encountered before? And look, luckily the universal translator often blends into the background of Trek, so these questions don't ruin the stories for us, because if we asked them, they, they would. It would ruin them. What, 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 why is he speaking English? <laughs> Other species of universal translators that work similarly, like the Ferengi, who originally had handheld devices but then developed inner translators because they sure have enough space for them. It makes sense that most other species have their own translation tag, or ours can work both ways. Why the universal translator is so important? Look, it just wouldn't make a compelling show if characters relied on a glitchy app, had to rifle through a paper dictionary, or played awkward charades and pointed at things every time they bumped into a new alien species. When the translator is embedded into the communicator badge and becomes a part of the uniform, it puts the issue of language into the background. Because we don't think about it much or just assume it works seamlessly, it becomes exciting when Trek's translating tech doesn't work properly, and then it becomes a central part of the story and the writers are like, okay, okay, now you can ask questions. Now you can ask questions. Don't ask questions next week when the alien's mouth moves perfectly with the thing because of the thing. Okay? 
As soon as you remove the ability to translate anything and everything on the fly, it becomes clear how integral a universal translator is to the blobs of Trek, whether it's in a computer, a com badge, or under the skin. That's why it's no surprise how often universal translators show up in other science fiction stories. The Microsoft in William Gibson's novel Neuromancer and further explored in several of his other novels is a small chip that you can plug into a socket behind your ear. It directly interfaces with your brain and gives you knowledge, skills, and computational ability to translate one language into another. There are also organic examples like the translator microbes in Farscape, bacteria injected into your brain which allow you to understand any spoken language. Not seen Farscape, but that sounds terrifying. <laughs> and the Babelfish in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is small, yellow, and leech-like, and probably the oddest thing in the universe. Pop one in your ear and it feeds on brain waves, translating any language you hear into your native tongue by excreting it out into your ear. Lovely. Will we ever have a universal translator? Look, we're not all wearing fancy com badges in the real world, and we haven't even discovered a Babelfish yet. But translation tech is still impressive and it continues to advance. There are many apps that you can speak into or type text into which then translate the words for you in seconds. Granted, they can't translate conversations in real time, but that's still a lot of translation power in your pocket. One of the best apps is Google Translate. Google's neural translation tech supports 108 languages and is one of the most powerful, accurate, and accessible translation tools today. As well as translating written and spoken language, you can point your device at the text translated in an excellent way to quickly decipher a sign or a menu and draw text characters. There are also several translation devices that you can wear in your ear. The Google Pixel Buds are a pair of true wireless earbuds that allow you to play music and date calls. But they also work with the Google Translate app, allowing you to hear spoken language translated into your ear in your native tongue. Other devices are solely dedicated to translation. The brand Time Kettle has made a number of these, including the WT2. These are a pair of true wireless earbuds. You wear one and the other person wears the other. Your words are translated in their ear as you speak and vice versa. WT2 can translate more than 20 languages, has a high accuracy rate, and only takes between one and three seconds to translate most words. Lawrence Moroni, the lead artificial intelligence advocate at Google has said, It's getting better all the time. AI, artificial intelligence, and ML machine learning has been a source of major breakthroughs. He says that before these things, translation was carried out word to word, the tech equivalent of just flipping through a dictionary to decipher a sentence, which if I remember my French GCSE, didn't work very well. I mean, it can be useful, but it often leads to misunderstandings. Language isn't simply about words. There's more at play, like context, culture, and different syntax. Moroni says that one of the biggest problems is slang. He says, if I was to share that man is wearing a green hat into Cantonese, the meaning and the gist of the phrase would be there, but the meaning would be very different. That's because in Cantonese, wearing a green hat is slang for his wife is cheating on him. Bit of a different meaning there, isn't it? <laughs> the problems with translation are explored brilliantly in the famous Darmok episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. This is about a race that uses metaphor to communicate, which makes no sense to the crew of the Enterprise D. Sure, the computer effectively translates each word that the alien says accurately, but without the knowledge of the Tamarian style of communication and their history and myths, which their metaphors draw heavily from, it proves challenging to understand the meaning. Moroni says this is why natural language processing, or NLP, is essential. This is a branch of AI that helps computers better understand how humans write and speak. But the big question is, I mean, are we ever going to get that Star Trek-like experience? And the big problem with this Star Trek tech is that the translation happens before the sentences finish. In some languages, you don't know what the sentence is about, in particular the action verb, because it's at the end of the sentence, so to expect an accurate translation while the person is speaking may just never be possible. A short delay when they finish the sentence, well, that might be possible. However, in other ways, we're really close. Videos are being dubbed by machines into other languages, with an artificial voice being used based on the original speaker. I watched one of these, and it kinda blew my mind, because also they lip-sync it. They use this lip-sync technology to make it look as if the speaker on screen is saying the foreign words. It's pretty wild. It's worth a Google. Is the Universal Translator the key to Trek's utopia? 
There are many reasons why the future imagined in Trek seems like a lovely place to be, for the most part. It's hinted that one of the primary reasons everyone on the planet got their act together is due to universal translation. This is a stark contrast to Douglas Adams' Babelfish. In The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, he writes that by removing barriers to communication, the fish has caused more and bloodier wars than anything else in the history of creation. So, which is it? Could better translation in the future help us or hinder us? Where the world is right now, it seems we have far too many problems that we wouldn't simply overcome with better communication. But it can be reassuring to look at Trek for a hopeful framework about how we could change things for the better with both the help of new tech and a deeper appreciation of each other. Thinking back to Darmok, it was only thanks to Picard's devotion to understanding and learning from the Tamarian captain Dolphin that led to a breakthrough in language and meaning. We've already learned that translation isn't simply about replacing one word for another. It only leads to effective communication when you learn more about who you're talking to and their experience of the world. What's more, learning that the Tamarians speak in metaphor only unlocked part of the puzzle. Picard also needed to take the time to understand the context and the nature of the myths and stories. But computers get smarter every year and we've made some incredible strides. For now though, you'll probably still want to take that Spanish 101 course, but whether you'll need it in a few years, well, who knows? But I mean, Probably not, right? Because technology is awesome. So, hello, I hope you liked today's video. Just a reminder that it was written by one of the writers over at The Companion, the brilliant sci fi lovers website and app that you can find linked to below. You could try it free for 100 days. And thank you for watching.